Hey everybody, Mobius1 here, doing a quick tutorial on how to set up this Vazel program. Um, some of you have uh, shown quite an interest in the Jewel of Ryloth videos that I posted the other day, and um, you can definitely expect more from that series to come as soon as the rest of my friends are ready to start their prologue episodes. Um, but for now, I figured I'd show you guys how to set it up the way that we have it so that you guys can have fun with your friends and maybe start your own campaigns or whatever. So, uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is actually download the engine. So you're going to go to VazelEngine.org, which the, all these links I'll put in the video description for you also. So their website is VazelEngine.org. Um, and right here, you see right on their main page, download Vazel 3.2.12, which is the latest version for Windows. Uh, there is a link here for downloading Vazel for other operating systems. So if you're using, you know, Linux or Mac, um, let's actually take a look and see. Oh yeah, here we go. So perfect. They give you all the files that you need for the different operating systems to download it there. Uh, you can donate to them if you want, or you can donate to me if you want, but ignoring that you don't need to do that to get this working it's totally free so you're going to download the installer it's going to be an exe if you're on windows you're going to run it it's going to install the program uh, but then you are not done after this next you need to go to modules up here at the top and this is a list of every tabletop slash board game or whatever that you can play using the Vazel engine and most of these are all player made or I, I guess I should say user made uh, because the Vazel engine actually allows you to make your own modules so you can make your own board game or tabletop game to play using the Vazel engine but since we're playing Star Wars we're gonna go ahead and click S and if I scroll down you can see here there's already there's a huge list of Star Wars games already well I guess not huge maybe like seven or eight ten uh, Star Wars games you could play here, but the one that we use, since there isn't one for the Star Wars role-playing game, um, we go ahead and use the Star Wars Miniatures module, which the Star Wars Miniatures is a game on its own. Uh, unfortunately, there are cards for each of the units that you play as, so and the cards aren't included in the module, so you would kind of need to have the cards in order to be able to know what the special abilities of all the units are, but since we're not actually playing Star Wars Miniatures, we're playing the Star Wars role-playing game, uh, that doesn't really matter to us. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to download this, uh, Star Wars SWMinis.vmod, and if you want the Starship expansion, you can download this one as well. And that's it. After you download this, you're going to open Vazel. So let me go ahead and open it. It does take a second to come up. And any day now. Wow, okay. Uh, actually, Vazel would not start for me, so I actually had to restart my computer. Uh, but now I have it. Uh, so I guess if you run into a similar problem in the game or the program won't start for you, try restarting your computer. Uh, if not, there is a, uh, a forum and a documentation link on the Vazel Engine website that should be able to help you out. <sighs> but okay, so once you get the uh, program running, this page I believe will be blank. You will not see this uh, SWM skirmish game right here. However, if you go to File and go to Import Module, You'll use this to import your uh, import the the Star Wars Minis .vmod module into the program, and then it should look like this. Then what you're going to do is you're going to right click on this and you're going to open module. That should open up a new window if the program wants to behave correctly. Actually, this part could take a little while because it's got to load every single bit of the miniatures module. Here we go. So you can start an offline game or you could load a save game, which actually I wouldn't even recommend doing this. Um, if you're going to play online, even if you're going to start your own online game, you want to look for a game online. Uh, I leave this show this wizard as, at startup checked. So you hit finish and you'll come to this little game browser here. Um, 
what you're going to see is on the right hand side, these are different rooms and games. And the way that we've been doing it is I've actually been right clicking on. Oh no, I'm sorry, you don't right click. Where it says new game, I usually just type in like Mobius's game and hit enter. That pops up a new little folder here, or file here, uh, that is my own game. And you can see that I am in my own game. Now, if you have friends that are trying to join, what they're going to need to do is they're going to need to double click on this, whatever game that you have set, and join the same directory as you. So they'll be listed in here with you. Once you have everyone in that you want, you can right click on the name of your game and lock the room. This will prevent random people from joining you. Um, so unless you want random people joining and typing into chat, I, I suggest doing that. All right, but I'm going to unlock it because it doesn't, well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, now what the host needs to do, the host needs to go to File, New Game. Now when you go to New Game, or even when somebody uh, joins your game, this is going to pop up. It's going to ask, what side do you want to join? So you could join as an observer, or there's four players that each have their own color. As the DM, I generally play as player one because it gives you the red color, um, and you'll see what that means. But actually, this doesn't particularly matter. Uh, because anybody can manipulate any unit on the board at any time. So I'm going to go ahead and choose player one and click next. Now you have to choose a map and there are actually so many maps to choose from. Look at this list of maps that you can choose from. So and you can... sorry about that. You can actually, once you click into this, you can then use the arrow keys up and down to cycle through the maps. Now unfortunately you can't really blow these up to examine them from within the program. Uh, you can go to the directory, the, the module directory, and open the module uh, using a program such as WinRAR to examine these files up close, but you really don't need to uh, because you can just open them up in the, in the in Vazel itself. So here's, you have a, a basic battle map, it's just a blank map if you do uh, want to prefer to use like the traditional just standard grid, um, but if you do like these more thematic maps, uh, you can choose from a gigantic selection of maps here. Uh, here's the one that we used, or that I used in the uh, Jewel of Ryloth prologue with uh, Koro. So let's just pick one that looks interesting, actually this one looks cool. Chasm Bridge. Alright, so we're going to choose that. I'm going to click Finish. So now we have the map here, and I can actually use this uh, little minus magnifying glass at the top here to zoom out or zoom in. And that is getting the game started. Now, when someone joins the game, if they don't actually see this, because they might not, what they need to do is they need to open this up up the top again. They need to right click on your name or whoever's hosting and click this synchronize button. What this will do is this will synchronize their client with your client. Um, so if, if you have a map open and they can't see the map, that's what they need to do in order for everything to pop up. Uh, once you get this up, it's all based on these buttons at the top. So this tiles slash units button, if I hit this, this will open up a list of all of the Star Wars minis that have ever been created and they have it all uh, categorized by different factions. So you have Rebel, Imperial, Fringe, Republic, Separatist, New Republic, and so on. All you have to do from this point is find the one you want. Here's Kyle Katarn from Jedi Outcast. I'm going to grab him and just put him on the board. There he is. Uh, now the colors of the bars they're kind of, they're not exactly right. I mean, that's supposed to be red. It looks kind of brown to me, but whatever. Uh, there are all kinds of different things that you can do to the units by right clicking on them. And I'm not going to go over everything in this video. This is really just how to get things set up. Uh, but that should be all that you really need to know in order to be able to, to fool around with this game. Um, by default, Whenever you drag a unit onto the board, it has their HP listed here, which for Kyle is 140. Again, that's for the Star Wars minis game. Since we don't aren't using that system, uh, you can actually get rid of this by just editing the HP and making that blank. 
So if I do that, that gets rid of that. And you can see Kyle actually has four force points since he's a Jedi. I'm going to get rid of those also. So now we just have a blank Kyle unit. And if this is one of your players, where it says Kyle Katarn uh, HP, you could actually type anything here. It doesn't have to be num numerical. So if I type in Mobius and press enter, now we know that this is me. All right? So this is, uh, this is how we have done our little role-playing game. Uh, you can drag units outside of the board to have them kind of ready to go, but it is important to know that anybody can see these, not just the dungeon master or the game master. So if you're planning on like having units in standby that the players don't know about, it's probably best just to have it uh, waiting up at the top here. And we have an Ewok scout, Ewok warrior. Ewok. Yay. So Kyle fighting alongside an Ewok. Very nice. One thing that I did forget to mention is the fact that you can actually load a saved game. Now, I, I didn't no notice... Ugh, I did note that uh, when we were opening the program, but what I want to show you is how I recommend doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and make my game, lock my room, new game, all right. So you don't actually need to have any of this done, but we're just going to say, let's assume, you know, we were playing a game. And now I want to load a different game. Going to File, Load Continuation. This will actually not work unless you close your current game. So close the game, File, Load Game. And actually, I have, I have one here already. Which one is this? Oh, that's a movie edit. OK. So if I load this up, here you can see this is actually the little Game Master map that I had uh, on my second monitor while we were playing through the uh, the Jewel of Ryloth campaign, our Koros prologue. So actually what I had done is I had two windows open and on my main monitor we were actually playing the game and on my secondary monitor I had this open so that I knew where I had all of these units positioned even though they weren't displayed on the main uh, game screen. That way Koro couldn't see uh, what what type of enemy was around a corner or what was going on. And what was really interesting is I was actually able to use this to put little notes on the different enemies. So for example, I had this guy was sleeping. Uh, these two guys were in their bunk room chatting. This uh, Twi'lek over here was working. And he, Koro, being the player, didn't see any of these notes. It was kind of up to me as the DM to, to feed these notes to him or have those affect any type of rolls. So whenever Koro uh, took a shot at somebody, I rolled a listen check, but if these two guys were chatting or one of these guys was sleeping, uh, that would have given them a penalty on their listen check. So it's... It's good to know that you can save games and have them uh, preloaded. So actually, I had this set up ahead of time so that when we actually sat down and decided to play, I already knew where all the units were supposed to be. I, I didn't have to like ask Koro to wait while I set everything up. So saving the game, simple file, save game. You can name it, and that's it. And then load it up later. All right? So once again, I hope this video has helped you out guys. Post any comments if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time.